Many of the greatest video games of all time are remembered for being groundbreaking works of art, pushing the boundaries of what was the norm during the time in which they were created, in terms of storytelling, gameplay, or maybe both. There is no doubt that each and every one of us has played or at least heard of games like this. However, there are also those games out there that tried to make an impact on the gaming industry, taking bold new directions, but due to a number of circumstances, such as poor marketing or even simply bad luck, these games were quickly forgotten about, despite their quality. Never has this statement rang so true than it does for Resident Evil Outbreak. For me, this is one of the most underrated Resident Evil games ever produced, and I can't help but feel it does not get the credit it deserves. Outbreak was one of the first Resident Evil titles to truly try and break the mould Resident Evil had created itself. I mean, yeah, there were other spin-off games like Survivor, which released in 2000, and Gaiden, which released in 2001, that tried to go against the Resident Evil grain, but both lacked certain qualities to fulfil their visions of experimental Resident Evil games. To put it bluntly, they were a bit sheer not very good. Outbreak, however, is a fantastic game, not just in terms of being a good spin-off Resident Evil game, but just a good game full stop. Outbreak arguably took the biggest leap in terms of experimentation. By having the gameplay revolve around multiplayer, this mostly unknown spin-off feels more like a Resident Evil game than many other entries in the franchise, which really says a lot about the state of Resident Evil throughout the years. Despite the great qualities of Outbreak, you don't see many people bring the game's existence up, besides die-hard fans and anyone who was lucky enough to play the game when they were younger. I have to admit, I was not aware the game existed until a couple of years ago when I saw videos talking about it, and when I learned about what the game consisted of, I thought to myself, how was this game not talked about more often? But once I started to dive deeper and actually play the game for myself, it became clear why this game is more of a cult classic rather than a giant success like Resident Evil 4. The reasons the game did not reach the highs many other Resident Evil titles did is quite tragic, and I can't help but think if a game like this came out today, then it would have done a lot better, which is all the more reason for us to get a remake of Outbreak. Technically, there are two Resident Evil Outbreak games, the original and File 2. However, it makes more sense to combine these two as both are very similar, despite a few minor changes being implemented in File 2. With that being said, let's take a look in depth at everything Outbreak has to offer, both the positives as well as the negatives, and uncover the reasons Outbreak is so criminally underrated. Resident Evil Outbreak was released in 2003 in late December in Japan and North America, but was delayed in Europe until September of 2004. As well as this, File 2 also had a very confusing release pattern, as it was released first in Japan in 2004, then was released in North America in early 2005, before seeing its final release in Europe in mid-2005. Outbreak at the time was viewed as the black sheep of the series, as it was the first Resident Evil game to incorporate cooperative multiplayer into its core gameplay. The development of Outbreak was a rocky one to say the least. Capcom had batted around the idea of making a multiplayer Resident Evil game, all before the second game was released. However, most Capcom members who worked on the franchise agreed that most of the fear generated within Resident Evil came from the player feeling alone and isolated, essentially having to rely on themselves to survive. The project remained dormant for some time until Capcom brought development back in 2002, as they saw potential in the project. Outbreak at the time was one of three games Capcom were developing that would incorporate online multiplayer. The other two were Auto Modelista and Monster Hunter. Sony saw the potential of online gaming for the PlayStation 2 console, however never quite seemed to be 100% on board with the idea Idea, and as a result, many of the games that initially had multiplayer capabilities were abandoned. In fact, Outbreak's online function was not supported in Europe, as Capcom decided to scrap the idea. In hindsight, I'm sure Capcom and Sony were kicking themselves once they saw how popular the Xbox's online service was. Obviously, as a result of this, Outbreak was not as big of a success as it could have been, as the biggest pull of the game had been scrapped for a large portion of the audience. This was probably the reason the game is not talked about nowadays, or looked at too fondly, as it seemed even Capcom wanted to forget about this game. A shame, as this game deserved so much more love, and if it was taken care of properly, then maybe Sony would have been the pioneers of online gaming for consoles, and not Microsoft. Now it's time to actually talk about the game as a whole, taking a look at the story and highlighting all the positives and negatives with the game. Although some elements of the gameplay may have been unfamiliar to a lot of Resident Evil fans, the story the game is set around was sure to make fans feel right at home in the Resident Evil world. Outbreak once again takes players back to Raccoon City. Whilst some would say that this is a negative, as having the game set once again in such a familiar place may make the game lose some of its fear factor and potentially cause the series to stagnate. Capcom knew exactly how to make the setting of the game one of the most interesting aspects of the game. I say setting, but it's more like settings, as rather than have the game be one consistent narrative like we had seen from every Resident Evil game so far, Outbreak is essentially made up of short stories, or scenarios as they are called, that depict different events happening in unique locations around Raccoon City. Players could have easily gotten bored with the 
this game, as two previous games in the franchise took place in the city, and in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis we saw the city explode, so any emotional ties or interests could have been lost. However, Capcom still saw potential for the setting, and created some very memorable locations. Yeah, some of them are ripped straight out of previous games, but this just helps bridge the games together, which I thought was pretty cool. The locations that aren't from previous games stand on their own, as they are some of the most unique and terrifying locations ever depicted in a Resident Evil game. They also really helped flesh out Raccoon City as a whole too. At this point, for all we knew, Raccoon City only consisted of apartment blocks, a few shops, a park, and a police station, but Outbreak was able to open our eyes to the true scale of Raccoon City. The hotel from Hellfire, the university from Decisions Decisions, and the old abandoned hospital from Flashback. Each location had their own style, their own personality, and Capcom really embraced the apocalyptic and helpless tone the game was going for. These locations aren't just unique in terms of appearance, but also in terms of how they play. It could be easy for someone to say that each scenario boils down to killing zombies, solving puzzles, and managing your items, and whilst yes, this is very much the core gameplay of the game, it is most certainly not the extent of it. Outbreak carries on the legacy of Resident Evil almost perfectly, blending these core mechanics together, making each scenario essentially a bite-sized version of a Resident Evil game. Some would say this would just lead to pacing issues, but honestly Capcom does exceptionally well at making each scenario concise, enjoyable, challenging, at times too challenging, and immersive, with the help of world building and cutscenes. Each scenario will begin with the player spawning in at the start point, and from then on, like any other Resident Evil game, they will have to look for items, such as herbs, ammo, weapons, and key items to help them progress. Like I said, Outbreak very much embraces classic Resident Evil. However, in order to make the game feel different in its own way, Capcom gave each scenario a unique gameplay aspect. Although they were aspects RE fans were already familiar with, no one scenario ever felt too similar thanks to a multitude of different gameplay combinations. Some had you be pursued by an almost invincible enemy, some were much longer in length forcing you to backtrack, other scenarios were shorter in length but far more challenging, and one even has a self-destruct escape segment. Each one of these gameplay mechanics had already appeared in the series at some point, and yet here, they never felt boring or out of place. They could be annoying at times, especially in the more challenging scenarios, but the game was supposed to be based around working together, so of course playing by yourself is going to be more difficult. But like I said, it's not really the game's fault, but rather the circumstances surrounding the game. As well as embracing familiar mechanics, the scenarios also incorporate a lot of enemies both old and new. At the end of most scenarios, there is a boss fight, again cementing the feeling that these scenarios are all separate, jam-packed Resident Evil experiences, perfect for anyone who wants to relive the experience of classic Resident Evil, but perhaps doesn't really have the time to play through an entire mainline game. These enemies and bosses also add a degree of challenge to the game, which is a welcome addition. Resident Evil has never been perceived as easy, while early Resident Evil hasn't, and Capcom wanted the same for this spin-off, as they knew difficulty was the key to fear in their games. Each scenario brings its own challenges, whether that be through the boss fights, puzzles, or lack of items. Despite the player having AI characters with them, helping them along solving puzzles and finding items for them, the game still manages to scare you. Capcom knew that the fear of isolation wasn't something they could lean on for Outbreak, so they had to come up with new ways to strike fear within the player. These small tweaks ended up being some of the most impactful in the game. In the past, enemies such as zombies and lickers were not able to follow you from room to room, meaning the player could essentially run from danger. Now we knew about the one enemy who broke this rule, but Outbreak made it so zombies can follow you if you don't deal with them, which means running away from danger is not an option at times, and you are forced to be smart with how you deal with an enemy. Hiding places have also been implemented to help you lose an enemy, making these the only form of safety you have. As well as this, enemies respawn after a certain period of time, making backtracking very dangerous, which most of the time can't be avoided, so new players will find themselves constantly wasting ammo before they realise enemies are essentially immortal. Saving was also another form of safety in the Resident Evil franchise, allowing you to take a quick breather from all the chaos that was happening around you. Saving in Outbreak is only temporary, and rather pointless in the grand scheme of the game. Each scenario is supposed to be a short and sweet experience, so it wouldn't make sense for you to save your progress entirely. The game is more or less like a gauntlet of different tests straining your skills, seeing if you have what it takes to beat them. There's honestly no escape from what lies ahead. While I guess you could possibly make things easier by looking over your map in the pause menu, except this is also made ten times harder, as viewing the map no longer pauses the game, and so you have to read your map whilst also making sure no zombies sneak up behind you. This is what I loved so much about Outbreak after playing it for the first time. It's just so unapologetic about its difficulty. It was also a complete trendsetter way ahead of its time, and I'm almost certain this game inspired many other aspects 
aspects of the franchise. This game had the player venture through a decrepit old building occupied by a serial killer way before Resident Evil 7 did it, and it even has a sexy female monster. Up until this point, Resident Evil games had either one or two main characters the story centred around. This made each game feel personal as the player grew familiar with each character, allowing them to feel connected to them and sympathise with them. Resident Evil Outbreak operates very differently, there is no main character to speak of, instead the player is able to choose from eight playable characters, all of which have different skills and abilities they can use to help them survive. With a roster this size, it could have been easy for Capcom to ignore giving them any significant story or character traits. And whilst yes, this is true to a degree, as none of them are flushed out quite like Leon, Chris and Jill, Capcom still made each of them feel unique through their appearances, stances and dialogue in game. As well as this, each scenario has its own cutscenes and the endings of the scenarios change perspective depending on which character you are playing as, again allowing the player to find out bits and pieces of a character's personality. Each character has their own advantages and disadvantages that can make a playthrough both entertaining and interesting. Players can find one that best suits how they play and stick with them, or they can use different ones to tackle obstacles in different ways. Out of all the changes Outbreak made to the standard Resident Evil formula, this was by far the most drastic, but nevertheless, it honestly works out so well in the game's favour. It gives the game such a unique identity within the franchise. A character selection like this also, unfortunately, brings its own sets of problems to the game, as some characters are clearly more useful than others, Yoko Gang rise up, and some are pretty useless. Sorry Jim. Yeah, this I feel is a good place to start talking about the game's issues. Like I said, Outbreak was designed to be a multiplayer game, and since the servers no longer work for the most part, some elements of the game have become infuriating. The most irritating part of the game for me has got to be the ad-lib feature. Despite being a multiplayer based game, Outbreak did not feature a voice chat system that would become popular thanks to Xbox Live titles like Halo 2. Instead, players were very limited when it came to communicating with each other in game. At the start of each game, players could use a text chat, but that was the extent of that feature. In a game that revolves around item management and teamwork, it is essential that players are able to communicate so they can check on their progression, share crucial information like the location of key items, or call for help if they are in danger. And the best solution Capcom could come up with was the ad-lib feature. The ad-lib feature works like a dialogue wheel. Each character is given set dialogue based around set themes. These are gratitude, needing assistance, commands, and giving information. This on paper seems like a useful tool as these short phrases can help you get your point across to teammates. However, AI-controlled characters also come equipped with this feature, and oh boy do they love to use their dialogue. During each scenario you play, you will most likely hear the same lines of dialogue uttered about 200 times each. As well as this, the AI is also programmed to spout random lines of dialogue every so often, and by every so often, I mean every other second. This makes an already stressful situation even more stressful, as not only are you trying to find key items and potentially run away from threats, but the constant battle from your AI companions makes it impossible to concentrate. If I'm being honest, most of my problems stem from the terrible AI. Now that doesn't mean the game is bad, some of my favourite games have terrible AI, but I would be lying if I said the AI in this game was not terrible. One problem that was thankfully fixed in File 2 was that characters were randomly selected by AI, and so you could end up with characters that were not very useful on your team. A lot of the time, AI who have special abilities will not use said abilities, meaning the potential for you to be stronger as a group is wasted. In classic Resident Evil, just keeping yourself alive was such a huge task, as you had to be careful of how much ammo you used, and prevent yourself from taking too much unnecessary damage. Now imagine trying to do this for two other characters as well. Your AI friends in this game are item sponges. Even after they've milked you for all your worth, sometimes they won't even help you. They will just watch as you slowly succumb to the horrors infesting the area, watching as your life slowly fades away until you are nothing but a shell occupying the floor. The moment your AI companions truly shine, however, is during boss fights, because they then, you can use them as distractions, cruel but effective. Outbreak deserves a remake. The gameplay of old, mixed with creative mechanics, make for a truly entertaining experience, and honestly, if a game like this was made today, people would eat it up. Some might say Project Resistance is in the same vein as this game, but that's just not true. Outbreak is on a different level to Resistance by miles. One shows the creative genius of a team wanting to bring new ideas to their franchise, whilst the other was a quick cash grab whose novelties wore off less than a week after it launched. This game brought so much much to the world of Resident Evil through its characters, creatures and locations, and it would be criminal for Capcom not to acknowledge its importance to the rest of the franchise. I mean, at the very least, give us more female liquor please.